Amen. Oh, worship team, we love you. We honor you. You stewarded this moment so well that we encountered the Father in this place. Amen. Isn't that phenomenal? That there's so much of freedom in this place that our worship team are so free. They are so free. I don't know about you, but you, I sensed it. That there was so much of freedom today. Wow. And for that, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you for serving the house. Ah. I need to explain to you guys that what you have just done is that you have allowed your worship. You have allowed your church family to experience your worship to your father. And through that, we experienced... Like what we experience here is your relationship with the Father today. And you display that so. We are so blessed with such an awesome worship team. So come on. We are so grateful. So grateful, so grateful. Wow. Woo. Why don't you say hi to the person next to you? Bless them. Tell them that you are so happy to see them at church today. <sighs> Phenomenal, so good. And while you're saying hi, we want to release our kids for life kids. They're going to have an awesome time in the classroom, so we have some phenomenal teachers that are serving them today so if you're new and you have kids between the ages of 2 to 11 release them send them to the room Woo. awesome 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 ah so good to see your lovely faces today church very good. All right. Kids, you can go enjoy your time in classroom. And the rest of us, let's get ready. get ready. You know, I truly believe that there's going to be a shift that is going to happen in your lives and in your hearts at today's service. I truly believe that that's already started, that God has already begun a good work and what he has started, he will see it to completion. And it's just awesome what God is doing. Amen. All right. We want to welcome, say a big welcome to anyone who's here for the very first time. If that's you, we want to say hi. We want to welcome you. We want to bless you. Why don't you wave? Wave to us. Yeah, bless you. Bless you. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you guys. We want to also say hi to our international audience who are joining us online. Um, oh dear. You guys are missing out on not being in the in-person service today. You know, I know I'm speaking to our international audience who are watching us from different countries, from around the world, but there are people who are watching us from the UAE. I'm encouraging you to come. 
join us for an in-person service because, you know, I, like I said, I really feel like there's going to be a shift and I, and I want to speak to those who are watching us from the UAE and who have become so comfortable in your comfort zone of switching on the TV and watching us from afar. I want to challenge you. I want you to come. I want you to, um, I, I want you to see um, the perception and the lie that you are in right now because the very thing that you were concerned about, about the lockdown is the actual thing that is now locking you down from attending our in-person service. The very thing that you did not like about lockdown is now locking you down from experiencing the family of God and experiencing the fellowship that we have here. So if you're watching us from the UAE, around the UAE, come. Um, you know, I, um, I don't know if we have any scientists in the house, but I, I know that, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You know, I don't know how accurate this is, but I know that, you know, they, they say that when you remove a cell, you are a part of the body, right? You are a body, you're watching us, and you are a body of Christ, you are part of the body of Christ. And studies say that when you remove a cell from a body, they can survive for a certain amount of time. They can, yeah, you can survive for... They say of up to 60 days, if you are placed in the similar environment, then what that cell is experienced inside the human body. And so when you remove that cell, you know, scientists, if you're in the room, please correct me if I'm wrong. But they say that when you remove it, it will survive, but it has to be in the exact same atmosphere and culture as the human body in order for it to survive. In fact, after, they say after 60 days, that's just two months. You guys have been on lockdown for more than two years. And they say, you know, six, uh, 60 days or two months, that cell stops multiplying. It stops multiplying because it's not in a bright culture and a bright atmosphere. And so I encourage you, you know, you might be watching us thinking, you know, it's so nice, it's so easy, I can still stay in my pajamas and watch the service, or I can be at a uh, brunch and turn on my mobile phone for a bit, but there's nothing like being in the same room as the body of Christ, and so... You know, some of you may think, oh, you know, some of you may be even offended by what I just said. And, you know, I say this very openly and with a clean conscience that my heart is so clean that I'm not fearful of anything that you might be thinking about right now. <laughs> but I'm setting you free today. I'm setting you free today. In fact, you know, there's a verse in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It says that when one turns to the Lord, a veil is removed. And when you come here and you experience the fellowship, the body of Christ and the family of Christ, the family of God, you know, I'm... I'm speaking truth to you, and it might offend you, but this truth is setting you free. And when you turn to the Lord, it says when you turn to the Lord without offense, without a, um, a seer conscience, you can actually see without that offense. You can now see. And so where, this, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so I'm setting you free today. Come, be a part of this family. Come and worship and experience the worship that we have here in this house and the word that is coming to you. You know, this word is coming to you, not to offend you, but it's to set you free. And that's the whole purpose of why we have church. That is the whole purpose why we have church. You know, you need to receive the word without offense in your heart. And you may think, okay, I've heard this over and over again. And, you know, it's the same thing, but I need you to hear the word. When you come here every week, you're listening to the word with fresh ears 
and a new heart ready to receive and say, God, I'm open for a new transformation in my life today. Amen. So all of those watching us, let us know if you want to be a part of a life group. We have life groups happening during the week on a Tuesday if you are in the UAE. And then we also have an international life group. So send us an email and let us know if you want to connect to one. You know, it's the same thing if you are not part of the actual gathering here in the church service, in-person service. It's the same thing when you neglect worship, um, the, the, the gathering at life groups. It's the same thing. You are choosing to remove yourself as a soul outside of the body. You can function. But you, you, you know, you can see it. And, and I know a lot of you may be watching, and I, I can, I'm, I'm using this time to teach into our culture that you can watch us for the last couple of years, and you've become so comfortable with that, that that has now become your norm. And, you know, again, you know, for I'm sure most of you in this room will know this, that, you know, have you guys heard of this term um, it's called shock, um, Stockholm Syndrome. Stock, Stockholm Syndrome. That's the one, okay? And this is the syndrome. You, I know I'm sure I'm speaking to very intelligent people. You probably know already. But that is a symptom that when you are so familiar with what is kept, kept you captive, you become one with that environment. You've become one with that person that when there's a hostage, the ones that are being captive actually has emotional attachment to who is who's capturing them, who's holding them captive. And I really felt like I wanted to share that right now. That just came to me because I really feel like what you feel like, okay, it's become normal. I want you to know that it has held you captive for so long. And now you've become so familiar with it now. It's become, you've become now this emotional attachment to what you are doing at home on your own or by yourself. And the very people that God has chosen to set you free is the one that you are offended with, is the one that you're pushing away. And, you know, it's true because, you know, some of them will say, you know, when they're um, if there's a, a bank host, you know, a hostage, and let's say a bank, they actually feel so emotional to it that when the police come to rescue them, they are side with the ones that are capturing them. Are you guys with me? Is this speaking to you guys? And so we have to be so quick to uh, be awakened to where we're at because what I'm doing during culture time is I'm calling you to a higher level. I'm calling you to have a higher perspective. I'm calling you to have your heavenly father's perspective over your life. That, you know, I can go on about offense. I don't know why the Lord is leading me this because I really feel like this thing of offense has really held us so much that it's, it, it's blinding us so much that we don't know the difference now. We don't know the difference. And so we feel like, oh, yeah, I'm not offended. But you have to check yourself all the time whether you have actually become one with it. And that's why you don't feel like it's wrong. All right? And so, you know, you can, um, uh, and I'm speaking to everyone at home and I'm even speaking to everyone in this room. You know, you can say, you know, oh, you know, I'm offended with the church or I'm offended with the, the body of Christ. But at the same time, you are crying out to your heavenly father to hear your family at home. How is that? The Bible says, do not be in two minds. Do not be in two minds. And so what you're doing is you're saying, you know, I'm rejecting the family of God, but at the same time, I need a breakthrough for my family at home. That's not how it works. The minute you honor the family of God, that gets fixed immediately. The minute you decide in your heart that I'm going to give my life for the kingdom of God, you know, and you can say, oh, you know, I don't want to go to church. You know, I'm offended. You know, they talk about money and they, they, they take my money and they, you're offended with money. 
I need you to, I need you to see this, huh? Are you guys, are you tracking with me? Are you guys enjoying this or should I? Okay. So you, some of you are like, you know, you know, last week, you know, John, you know, shared about, you know, there was like a fence. I don't know if you caught it, but there would have been a fence in some people's hearts because of that. And so now you're saying, okay, oh my goodness, I don't want to go to church today. And that's probably why some of you are not here today. And so you, you say, okay, I'm offended because they talk about money and all of that. I mean, we don't really talk much about it at all. We always talk about the heart. We never talk about finances. We talk about your heart. And so, but when we talk about, when you think about it, it's like, oh, it's the church, you know, whether it's here or any other church, they, oh, they talk about money. It's always, it's only about money. And so now you're offended with money. And then that same day you're praying and you're on your knees and you're asking God for a breakthrough. And you're wondering why the banks are calling you and chasing you up for that payment. You're wondering why you're not able to make your... Am I speaking to you guys? Yeah. I'm building culture. I'm building culture. I know a lot of you are new to our family, but this is, this is our, our culture here. We talk about the heart why we do things, and our heart behind why we do it. And so every time you hear the word, anyone who takes the mic, and when John is giving the word, I need you to receive it without offense. I need you to receive the word without offense and believe that God is speaking to you. You know, you can sit there and think, okay, this word of somebody else, this word is coming to you for you. This word is coming to you for you to set you free, to set you free. Amen? Okay, ha. shall we uh, share some testimonies? <laughs> now that your hearts are ready to receive without offense, amen? Awesome, awesome. All right, this testimony um, was sent in by Melissa. Uh, Melissa is part of our Pune life group in, uh, our life group in Pune, India. And so she sent in a message, uh, an email saying that in 2019, she submitted a claim uh, for reimbursement for a medical treatment that she had. And so she submitted it to her insurance company. And shortly after she submitted all the forms and the invoices, um, there was a lockdown. The lockdown happened. And so for a long time, nothing was, was happening to her a claim. In fact, the person that was handling her case, her claim, left the company. And so there was no proper handover. And so people in the office did not know what happened to her forms or her invoices. And so this went on for a long time. And then she decided enough is enough. I'm going to commission my angels to go into that office to find my documents, find the forms, find the invoices and get it processed. She's testifying today that last week she, um, her claim was approved and she received her reimbursement and all that was due to her, she received it last week. And, you know, again, it's the same thing, you know, clean conscience towards it. Again, it's your identity, how you operate. And I love this testimony because you might be thinking, you know, it's just sending angels. Oh, we hear this all the time, but you have no idea how powerful it is when you send and commission angels with a clean heart and a clean conscience. When you have a clean conscience, you are operating from a heavenly realm. You are not of this world. You are in the world, but you are not of this world. You are of from above. And so from that place, you're operating from there and you are commanding and commissioning from heavenly realms. I need you to understand identity. You are a son of God. You have a heavenly father who is seated in heaven, in heavenly places, far above all your natural situations. Everything that is happening in your life, He is seated above and you are seated there. And so the, the natural realm and the situations that you are experiencing right now, it's, it's like, when you know when you are up on the plane and you look down 
the building that you want. So you can go up on a plane and you can look down at the tallest building and it will look small to you. Whereas if you are on the ground, you are looking up at it and you are overwhelmed by the size of that building or the size of that mountain. But when you are seeing things from above, when you are seeing things as your heavenly father sees it, it is so small. It is so small. And he's like, man, I'm giving you the authority to rule over everything that is of the natural. And so when you don't have offense in your heart and you don't have fear, you have the authority and the power to rule over that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, this next uh, testimony was sent in by Bikaren. Um But Karen said that, you know, um, during COVID, uh, you know, their office, um, all the staff were told to work from home. And, you know, they became really comfortable with it. They enjoyed it. And then after two years, they started opening the office again and they were asking staff to come back. And so they started coming back and she started hearing her colleagues and the people in the office complaining and saying, oh God, we don't like coming to the office. We enjoyed being at home and working from home. She chose to keep a clean heart, again, clean conscience. She chose to keep a clean heart and a clean conscience and not say anything negative. She kept a clean conscience. And then they finally said, okay, now everybody come back. Everyone, 100% back into the office. And it, the complaining kept going. And so not long after that, she realised, she, she noticed that now people, her colleagues were now like, oh, it's actually not too bad. It's actually not too bad. They started enjoying coming back to the office. And she realised that because she has the power to change the atmosphere from a clean conscience. Again, church, I, I can't stress this enough. You know, you can say heart, we love hearing the heart, but it's so important. And I need you to I, I, I need you to practice checking yourself every single time. It is so quick that you can be so offended and then about something, and then once offense comes, then judgment comes, and then before you know it, things come out that you shouldn't say. And so she said that she realized that because she had a clean conscience, she was able to change the atmosphere so much so that now all her colleagues are like, you know, we actually enjoy coming to the office. It's much better than being from home. And so because of that, the management realised and saw now everyone's so, so happy then enjoying coming to the office that they actually said, you know what, you can now work from home a few days of the week and then you can come back. Yeah. I know most of you are seeing this. Some of you are taking time to connect the dots and see the connection. How has my heart, without even saying anything in the office, can change the atmosphere? It is possible. Because when you have a clean conscience, what you're doing is, you know, where you're, you're giving, you're, you have the power to change things around you. You have the power to change situations around you or in your office or in your family without saying a word, without retaliating. The minute you become offended or the minute you come under that, what you're doing is like you're giving over that power to that very thing to now come on you. Yeah? I, I, I'm loving, I'm enjoying this culture time. It's awesome, it's awesome. And so, but Karen, you know, is thanking God because um, this whole office atmosphere wouldn't have been like that if it wasn't for her. And you might think, okay, I'm part of a really big company. I'm part of a big family or I'm in, 
a group of friends and I'm just one and what can I do to change the situation? It is powerful. Who you are as a son of God, you are powerful. No matter how many people are against you, you can switch things, you can overcome the situation, you can be victorious just by having a clean heart. Amen? Awesome. All right. Well, the last one that we want to share was sent in by Sunungurai. Sunungurai. Please excuse my pronunciation. Sunungurai. Sunungurai. She sent us a testimony saying that on the 16th of January 2021, that was last year, she lost her husband in a tragic accident and she was left to take care of her son or their son. And so she said that this trauma and this situation really affected her heart. It affected her so much emotionally. Um, and so she, was, she would lock herself up and, and she was so depressed. In fact, nothing made her um, happy. Nothing made her, she, she wasn't enjoying life because of the situation, what she went through and the trauma that she had experienced. And so now, today she sends us an email and a testimony saying that she is so grateful that even though she was in such deep depression, she was able to find a family who spoke life and believed life called Life Church Global. <laughs> And so now she's now, you know, she's got her confidence back and now she's out of that place, the Life Church Global, this family has helped her come out of that depression. That is big. It's big. It's big. And, I, you know, I can, I can really just say, you know, this is what you get when you are with the family when you are part of a community. You know, you've been away for so long, you come in, even the fear of like, okay, now they're gonna judge me because I've been away for so long. Come, I want you to come away from that fear and just come because what you're experiencing, the depression and what, the, the, everything that you're feeling and thinking, the negative things that you're thinking about, all of that can be dealt with when you are surrounded by people who speak life to you, who will call out the greatness that is in you already. And so she said she's going so grateful for Life Church Global, who has now have become her family and has helped her out of this situation. And so she's from Zimbabwe. And so Pastor Talent approached her and mentioned to her that, you know, uh, Pastor Talent, Pastor Emmanuel uh, will be heading home to Zimbabwe for a holiday and that they can take something for her son. They can carry things for her son when they go back. And she was so happy about that because she was so touched by the love of God. And But at that very moment, she didn't have anything to give to her son. She didn't have the means to buy any gifts for her son to send with Pastor Emmanuel and Pastor Talon. But then suddenly someone came, decided to go shopping, and, and it just, you know, heard the, felt the nudging of the Holy Spirit to buy clothes and shoes for her son. And she was so touched by the love of the people that she, this person would go out of their way, go and buy shoes and clothes for them. For, for her son, and now she has something to send with them to give to her son. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing how God provides? And again, it comes down to being a part of God's family. God's family. And I know John touched on it last week that you are never alone. You should not be alone. You were never called and created to be alone. You were created for fellowship. You were created for relationship. You know, every testimony that I shared, it just touched on our culture, on having a clean conscience, on seeing things from a higher perspective, 
knowing that you are not of this world, but you are seated from above. And that's how you dictate your life. That you don't settle for what the natural realm is dictating and showing you. But you are now from above. And you say, no, this is not for me. This is, I'm, this is foreign. This natural situation that is trying to attack me right now or trying to steal my peace, that's, that's not me. I, I, I can't even relate to it. You should come to that place where you, you look at situations that I don't, this, I'm numb. I'm numb to what this world and the natural realm is dictating. Because I know my place, I know who I am, that I am seated from above and I look down at my situations and I command it to change. I command it to change. And so right now, I want to encourage everybody in this room and all of those who are watching us, whatever situation you are in, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out of that place. I'm calling you up. I'm making you realize I'm awakening you and I'm awakening your hearts to see that you are better off than where you're at right now. That you are meant for more. That you deserve greater. That you have a heavenly Father who loves you so much that He will not just sit there and enjoy you struggling and suffering through life. He has called you out of that place. In fact, you are already victorious. The blessings has already been released. But you just need to come to a place of realizing that I am of heaven, that I am of my heavenly Father. And so right now, I just pray and release and I tap into that realm right now. I call into that realm. I call you up. I call you up. I need you to realize. I need your eyes to open. Spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes. Move away from what you are experiencing in the natural. I need you to see yourself as a spiritual being who is loved by His heavenly Father. That every need that you have, every struggle that you are going through, every challenge, He has already won it. He has already won it. You are already victorious. That the blessing that you've been waiting for has already been released. But I need you to understand that you will not be able to experience it with a seared conscience. With a defiled heart, you cannot experience, you are not able to see into what God has already released and done for you with a defiled heart. Amen. And so I bless you, church, with that word. I declare that from today that we will be so quick to realize, oh my gosh, I'm in a fence right now. Clean my heart. Clean my heart. Okay, I'm driving down the road and the driver cuts me off. Offense. Oh my goodness. I realize, okay, I shouldn't do that. Clean heart. It's something that I need you, church, to practice over and over again. It's become a lifestyle for John and I. It's become, and you know, some of you know this, like every time we have a meeting with people, you know, John and I will walk away and we will pray. We'll say, after meeting, after meeting, like you go away. And we walk away from there. We get in the car and we just pray, God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for the time that we had with these people. If there was a moment where we allowed our hearts to experience offense based on what we heard, we remove it right now. We remove it right now. And sometimes we will go from meeting and we will drive to the next meeting and we will do that on the way because right in front of that person that we're meeting next I'm there to serve, and I'm there to serve with a clean heart, a clean conscience. And it could be, it could be someone who I heard from the previous meeting. And it's so easy for us to go into that place now with this veil of offense and veil of hurt and veil of bitterness because of what we just heard. And now we're called to meet that person 
we are not there to serve that person if we are going in already with judgment in our hearts. And so I'm calling you, church, today, I'm calling you to a higher place where you are supposed to be, a higher realm where you are meant to be. That is where we live from. And so I'm calling you and I'm encouraging you today and I bless you with that. And so we're going to send out, if we have the ushers ready, we're going to send out the for seed time. Remember, don't be offended with finances. Don't be offended with money. This is seed. This is like <clears throat> just one of the ways that you can demonstrate your love for God. And, and I say seed, we don't talk tithe. We, I don't mention tithe at all. I say seed. We say seed. Why? Because when the minute you hear tithe, you're limited. You're limited because you have a, a, a number in your mind the minute I say tithe. But when I say seed, I'm speaking to people who are of grace, who live from grace, who understand grace, that when I say seed, it means whatever the Lord leads me to give. Amen? Are you guys ready? Are you ready for the Word? I hope I've stirred your hearts and I've prepared your hearts to receive the Word today without offense. Prepare your hearts right now. I know your hearts are ready to receive what John is about to preach without offense. So church, welcome my wonderful husband.